<laughs> We're recording once again. I failed. <laughs> and I'm failing right now because the camera's supposed to be on me. <laughs> whenever I, was I failed. <laughs> There's Marcus so falling on the sword again. <laughs> New equipment. We're gonna get. We're gonna get it all figured out. It's. It's. We're having fun in the meantime. It's Friday the thirteenth, and I missed our first eleven eleven wish. By the time I get this right, it may be eleven eleven p.m. <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. uh, we're here with uh, Tammy Harris, and we'll be right back. Our mission is to promote strategies and policies which ensure improved health for all citizens of Nowata County. Good morning, Nowata County. Um, it's actually almost noon. It is noon. It's 12.01. Okay, good afternoon. One minute afternoon. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, like Marcus said, it's Friday the 13th. Um, it's Podcast Friday. Happy happy Podcast Friday. Truth. True podcast Friday. Yeah, it's it's the real podcast Friday. So um, today, joining us is Tammy Harris from Oklahoma Union. Um, okay. You know, we didn't talk about the last time. So I guess if you want to introduce yourself, like how long you've been at Oklahoma Union and what you're... Tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, yeah. That standard question. <laughs> uh, so I um, have four kids. I'm married to Michael. We have four kids, two in college, two in high school. Can't believe it's happened. Oh, man. Never thought they'd grow up, but they are. <laughs> um, and I've been at Oklahoma Union um, since 2008 officially as a school counselor. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Awesome. Okay. Well, so um, we're going to talk about a really timely topic today, and it's back to school. Um you said Oklahoma Union goes back next Tuesday. Yes. I know No Water goes back on Thursday. I don't know when South Coffeeville does, but um, next week is the week for everybody. So um, everybody's getting fair week out of the way and school next week. So um, I think we're just going to jump right into our questions. Um, well, first off, could you oh, yeah. please teach us yeah. about routine? <laughs> <laughs> if I had had a routine, I oh, wouldn't man. be stressed out like I am right now. And I feel like I'm living that whole transition yeah. back to routine and consistency and trying to find normalcy. So these are all key terms, by the way. Right, that, right. So, so, yeah, case in point, I just saw your stress levels with technology <laughs> just go way elevated. And, uh, Through the roof. Because what... Well, what was normal and was supposed to happen mm -hmm. has been changed up by all your new technology. It did so not happen. We did this on purpose. <laughs> the geniuses. Yeah. We staged it. Um, so, yeah, change is pretty stressful. So you get new technology or you have a different mm -hmm. routine here and your routine is not what it should be. And so it just escalates everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so routine is really important. And, See how uh, flushed my face is? That is, <laughs> that is a sign. That I'm stressed out. Breaking out in hives. <laughs> signal. Uh, so you mentioned Fair Week, and uh -huh. I think that's a really hard time because our focus, so many of us in our county are so focused on the fair, and that's a whole routine of itself. But if we can now kind of shift gears and just be thinking, oh, my gosh, school's right around the corner. Yep. Um, so it's always good to be gradual about that, have some conversations with your kids, start getting them into that transition of, you know, starting to make sure that we've, got a bedtime being established again, um, and getting some sense of routine back. Um, the thing about routine is basically it's predictable. And when things are predictable, it makes all the difference. It gives, mm -hmm. gives us a sense of security and safety. Mm -hmm. And um, it just takes that stress level down whenever we have procedure and routine at school. We always spend like the first two weeks building routines at home, I would say, you know, the week prior to school, we need to get back into some school routines. Mm -hmm. And um, it now, just... should that be a hard stop all of a sudden <laughs> from staying up and maybe hiding that tablet and playing Minecraft till midnight? Is that what you do? All... <laughs> My son, I think I've caught him doing it a couple times. Yeah. You were, you had a, a great way of talking about it earlier before mm -hmm. I screwed stuff up again. It, easing into that routine at home parents you know you had mentioned the lavender you know oh, yeah. and, and easing the kids into it instead of i think my kid we, we've been trying to get them up but we've been going to work and they're having to stay home by themselves mm -hmm. they're 
once we're out the door, they're yeah. like, <laughs> going yeah. back to sleep. It's like, no. Yeah. And then they're not and then tired. Hard to get, and then yeah. Hard yeah. So to get what are some of the easiest ways for parents to help their kids get back into a to routine? ease into that routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, just being intentional. Um, so the nighttime routine matters because it affects your morning routine. If you're tired, you're not going to bed at a good time, then you're not going to feel like getting up and going to school or anything else. So like for nighttime routines, um, it's good to just like, anytime there's a transition, it's good to give your kids, especially like a little bit of a warning. So, you know, just like to say, you know, it's an hour before, before bedtime time to turn off the electronics and that's kind of their signal. It's time to wind down. Or sometimes it's just with the little ones giving them the bath and the bath is a signal that, oh yeah, I'm getting ready to go to bed. And so anything we can build in that's just kind of, it starts setting their body into that relaxed mode. Um, like you mentioned the lavender, I like essential oils. And so anything that can make my atmosphere calmer, I dim lights, I play some relaxing music or whatever, anything that kind of sets that tone for sleep because um, sleep is something that I think we're all neglecting. And we see kids coming to school tired and they'll tell us why well, I was up doing <laughs> such and such. And, and then I kind of say, oh, shame on you. But then I'm like, yeah, I was up a little late too last night. And so we're all guilty of it, but mm-hmm. it affects us. Mm-hmm. And uh, if we're tired, we're not going to perform well the next day. And so, um, the nighttime routine is important. Um, you know, elementary age kids really should be getting like 10 hours of sleep. And I don't think we realize how much, um, sleep we need, but we're not getting it. And then the other thing about that is the morning routine is critical. It's probably the most important part of your day. Um, because if the kids come to school and they're rushed and they're unprepared and they forgot their backpack, then they come in stressed and it starts the school day off poorly. Um, so one thing I've liked to have done in the past anyway with my younger when my kids were younger was having like a visual chart on the fridge something that they can move their clip or something and show I brushed you know I ate my breakfast now it's time to brush my teeth and that way while mom and dad are getting ready for work the kids can be kind of independent getting Mm -hmm. through their routine checking off the list whatever you want to set up Um, but It'll just make everyone happier in the morning whenever you get out the door and everyone's done what they're supposed to. We've been responsible. Um, and that takes a lot of time and energy to set up. But once you get it going, it's really helpful mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. with our busy lives. Uh, so you mentioned gradual and those like five minute warnings. Hey, five minutes till we load the car. And that's your cue. You should be putting on your shoes, you know, and you got to build that in. Um, I think one thing I struggle with is just the consistency of it because mm-hmm life doesn't just have all those right. like you mentioned distance the, learning days oh, all of a sudden yeah. in the middle of a schedule you yeah. know it's like well that's out of routine and so you have to shift mm-hmm. but, so as a parent i have to put effort into raising my children <laughs> Wait, no <what? laughs> yeah they, we we talked a little bit about uh routine preparing mm-hmm. a meal and how, how valuable that can be um but it does take work and it's it, it could be easier to just mm-hmm. go okay guys uh put chicken nuggets in the oven, you know, and that that's going to be dinner tonight or but there's we can leftovers. Have those chicken nuggets, but let's sit around the table and eat our chicken but, yes. nuggets together. Exactly. together. Exactly. Let's do it together. And uh, I think the rule has and to be it pays dividends. No mm-hmm. phones at the table. Mm-hmm. And let's just sit and actually talk to each other about I don't know what, but um, we just they crave that. Right. They really mm-hmm. um, I was telling earlier, you know, just about um, I can invite a kid in to have lunch and they just love having somebody to sit and talk to Absolutely. and they'll tell me that they are not doing that at home, but I know everyone's busy um, and our schedules are all over the mm-hmm. place with sports and different things like that, but we have to be intentional, even if it's like one week, I'm sorry, one day of the week that we do that. Really family meal time is a, an important routine. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, in my experience, you know, working with families that for whatever reason, live a very hectic lifestyle, They're very busy, working all the time, have kids, and they maybe knew that, oh, growing up, we used to sit around the table, we just don't have time to, well, you got to make the time, and uh, sometimes they would come back and report back and say, you know, we, we made it a thing where once a month, we'll sit down and have a meal, and it's great, and then I would have multiple kids going, I really want to do this more often, but my parents don't have the time or they're too tired to. So I started learning how to cook a little bit Mm -hmm. and preparing some things. And then we would, you know, as counselors, I used to be a counselor at Grand Lake, and uh, we would teach them how to make simple, be safe, you know, safe in the kitchen and make their own things. And then they could go in and they feel like they were contributing to their parents. And the parent would, lo and behold, go, okay, we can sit around the table more because I'm exhausted at the end of the day. But if my 13-year-old daughter is able to do the oven... And uh, the son is able to, you know, peel potatoes or whatever the case may be. And then they got to do it more often. And they would inevitably, across the board, without exception, 
those families that actually practice that and put the energy into it, that prep work, like you were talking about making a list of visual list of check, 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 we're doing this. It keeps them on that routine. Then it, the, the pre-production, mm-hmm. uh, as I would say, uh, that work put into it before pays dividends, but it's got to take that time to be intentional about establishing that routine. And that's not always easy, but again, the same th- theme of easing into it and mm-hmm. getting the right. rhythm going. And you said something that was important too, and that's just about getting the kids helping. Mm-hmm. Like um, we're a family; everyone contributes, yeah, and they kids love it. They oh, love they to love help, it. and even mm-hmm. teenagers—they're not going to admit it. But if <laughs> no, you get them won't. engaged, and <laughs> like they need to have their important jobs around the house, like mm-hmm. I think that's really important um, because they—we all serve each other, mm-hmm. and um, they need to see that they need to contribute to the family, and I think they really do love that. Mm-hmm. And they—they, they, I have noticed kids crave consistent uh boundaries like whether they'll ever admit it or not but whenever they don't have boundaries sometimes i've seen kids feel like they're not loved because they're not ever getting on to like Mm -hmm. i'm getting ready to stick the knife into the light socket (laughs) anybody gonna stop me okay i guess you don't you know but they do crave those boundaries and that's kind of counterintuitive to people because they're like i don't want to but that overflows That overflows into the school setting a lot. We can see that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was one of the things I think kids are struggling with a little bit, especially during the quarantine. And then we come back and we're back in a structured setting. And, um, and, and kids are forgetting, you know, I have to um, ask or wait to go whenever the whole class goes to the bathroom. Or I have to wait Mm -hmm. until the teacher's done talking to talk because at home, whenever we're just in a more relaxed setting, um, those things are kind of just whenever you have to go to the bathroom, you go and you kind of talk yeah. over each other and there's a lot of, dy- you know, dynamic conversations happening, but a classroom is a lot more structured. So it's really important too, for the parents to build some structure into their home, set some boundaries, um, reinforce just basic etiquette and manners. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think we see a lot of that too. Like the kids aren't remembering to say, thank you. I don't know if it's just, we get so busy, we don't take the time to do that, but we've got to model that, but we also need to remind our kids that um, there's some really important like rules of how to act right mm-hmm. and and yeah. that falls into those rules or those boundaries and so can we ask this question Trista uh, some of that rhythm was lost over COVID and it quarantine. certainly was yeah. yeah I mean um, so last podcast we did was with Cassandra Turbot with Grand Lake and we talked about community mental health and of course, our kiddos are members of the community, too. And so um, talking about their mental health and, um, you know, going into a new school year, um, kind of coming off of a, what's the word I'm looking for, like um, a modified school year, I guess, yeah. uh, last year, coming out of quarantine, all of that fun stuff. We've got anxiety about more than just starting school, maybe, right. especially with the possibility of, you know, cases going up and all that fun stuff and and even another thing i just thought of was uh some daycares had to shut down just because there was a case and so maybe the kids that are typically in the summertime going to daycare and having that structure Mm -hmm. uh maybe out of necessity having to stay home because the parent may have to work and that younger kid may have to stay with that uh older cousin or something like Mm -hmm. that and they're losing that routine and maybe they're hanging out with an older kid that's supposed to that really doesn't have the skills to be in a routine because they're 13 them, themselves, you know, mm-hmm. and I can see that being uh, pretty common, you know, just, it's a necessity. Definitely. Childcare is uh, so expensive and hard to obtain in the first place, but then uh, out of necessity just to get mm-hmm. by because of the COVID restrictions yeah. and stuff like that, I can see that being a struggle. So what are, I mean, what are some ways that parents can help ease their kiddos anxiety? I mean, and we're talking all ages, pre-K through 12. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some strategies um, that parents can use? I mean, we just talked about getting them into a routine, um, having a known right. thing. But So um, I think what COVID really did was it affected our sense of safety mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, it affected our sense of belonging and connectedness. Mm-hmm. And those are two critical things that um, when you don't feel safe and you don't feel like you're connected, um, it raises, you know, that anxiety in us. And so um, I think we really need to be aware as adults of our own anxiety levels 
because like we were just talking about with the technology thing, um, COVID's kind of elevated us all naturally. Mm -hmm. And so instead of being in a calm state, we're all in an alert state because we don't know really what to expect, that unpredictable thing that's been going on. We get in our brainstem. Yes. And that higher we thinking. Do. Survival mode. That higher is that thinking. like the reptile brain? Or yes. What is that? Okay. Exactly. Oh, yeah. the oh. reptile <laughs> brain. The rep Finally. My we snake mug. Has, yeah. The Finally. snake mug. He has a, he has a place. He has a purpose. And, and logic, <laughs> logic and compassion kind of go out the door whenever you get into your brainstem and you get frustrated and some of that other higher thinking. And problem solving. Yes. Out the yes. window. Learning. Yeah. I mean, decision making. All of that is. I demonstrated that earlier with my <laughs> terrible technology malfunction so um so that really um comes down to us as an adult being able to ourselves recognize when we're you know i'm already kind of here because of everything that's changed in my last year and a half the new normal and so little things might throw me over the edge i might be more impatient i might be more likely to overreact to my kids misbehavior and so a lot of grace is needed but also for the parent to have grace on themselves and to take care of themselves and to take a minute when they need it um, because the kid's going to mirror you as the adult so whatever state you're in if you're in a calm state they'll eventually kind of calm down with you but if you get more elevated with them you know how that goes mm -hmm. um so then it becomes a competition. Who's going to be the most frustrated and say, <laughs> you better back off because I'm more angry than you. <laughs> I get into that. Oh, I'm it's hard. Guilty. Um, so we have to be able to then help them learn some strategies to calm themselves. And it's not just escaping off to a video game. It would be, um, going maybe for a walk or doing something that has a little bit of rhythm or relaxation to it. Um, some deep breathing. Uh, I don't think we realize how important breathing is just to get that oxygen in and to calm our bodies and to help us to think again. Um, our as coping a, skills. Yes. Uh, as a parent, I can't emphasize enough the importance of listening to our kids. Um, because if they're having anxiety and they're saying, well, I'm nervous about school or whatever they say, they are reaching out to you and engaging with you and they're sharing their heart. And so we really can't have judgment on that, you know, because it, it's what it is to them. It's truth to them. And we don't want to minimize them and say, oh, you shouldn't worry about that because it matters to them. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so just to listen to them and validate, oh, you're feeling kind of nervous or scared about school. And just to let them talk, um, that sometimes is they just needed to release it. And then once it's out there, they feel better, you know. Like and sometimes, <laughs> uh, especially with younger kids, they not, may not be putting words to their feelings. If they are, fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I've noticed my son, if he's missing me, he'll start talking about anything that he knows that I'm halfway interested in, and he'll just go and go and go because he just wants to have the attention and have that interaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, would, you had mentioned earlier about sitting down with kids at lunch and how much they love that just attention and just listening to what they have to say. Sometimes I know he, my son will talk about Minecraft and I know that I need, even though I may go, all right, bud, I understand. Yeah, it's a video game, but he's so enthralled in it. He needs that interaction. And sometimes just being heard is so valuable and calming to him. And he's and so trying parents, to share what's important to yeah. you. Yep. So parents yeah. be patient not the greatest one to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to say it, but it's, I recognize it in the things that I need to work on because we all have things we need to work on. Absolutely. But if they're going on and rattling on, maybe that's their way of telling you, hey, I'm stressed out. Will you please listen to me and help me bring down my anxiety because I just need to get this out. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's not as direct as I'm feeling anxious about school. Mm -hmm. If they can put words to that, fantastic. Somebody has really helped them along the way to put their be able to communicate what they're feeling, but sometimes it's not as obvious. Yeah, and, and some kids, depending on their age, they may need you to name that. Maybe they aren't even realizing right. that they're nervous, but they might go, you might say, you seem a little nervous. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I am, you know, mm -hmm. and they may need you to kind of point that out to them mm -hmm. to identify what's going on. So, yeah. Um, I think building on this, we're at 19 minutes. So... What would you like to do? Would you like to keep going? Maybe we could wrap this up and start a second one. Or do you think that we've covered stuff or do you have more? I know we had so much, so much good conversation earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think we could wrap it up for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the wrap up, Trista. <laughs> so the, the wrap up, I can't, I can't do what Marcus can do. Um, oh, so <laughs> that was, that is the, the um, level of my talent right there. 
So with the grant that I'm on, the Drug-Free Communities Grant, and then also the Partnerships for Success Grant that Crystal's on, um, both of our grants focus on our youth um, in our communities, mental health, um, of course, substance abuse, that you know, self-medication, that kind of thing. And um, so one of the initiatives that we talk about a lot in our grants are improving and increasing the protective factors. So um, some of the things that you mentioned, um, you know, just listening to your kids, engaging with your kids, having a family meal, um, doing an activity together, whatever that is, communication, um, those are all protective factors um, for our kids, just improving the environment that our kids are growing up in. Um, and I think we've said it before, it's it takes a community to raise a kid. and. Absolutely. Um, for sure, it's the family, it's the school, it's, you know, kids don't just go to school anymore just to go learn. They they go to school to, I, I, don't, I mean, I... Get some of their basic needs. Yes, to, to be nurtured. I mean, and obviously, you know, any adult that your child interacts with, you want them to be a nurturing person. So, um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. If the I'm, environment... I'm rambling, so... As the, <laughs> <laughs> if if the environment is conducive to a person's mental health yeah. and the education, it all builds a very big, strong base for our youth. Mm -hmm. And um, I've said this before, and and no no adult needs to take this the wrong way. We know that it's easier to shape and mold a healthy youth if mm -hmm. an adult decides, you know what, I'm going to smoke cigarettes, and that's their choice. That's their legal right. It's not the healthiest thing. It's not a healthy co coping skill, but it is a coping skill. We, admittedly, it's something that brings their stress because it's a habit that they've used. But really, for us to make a real change is we've got to make sure our babies got everything that they need to grow into a healthy adult that can make good decisions. Mm -hmm. And um, if adult has already made those decisions, then you know we'll support them. Still love you. No big deal. Um, but the youth is where we can really start to uh you know every generation is going to be a little bit smarter that's our whole goal as a parent is we want better for right. our kids than than maybe the choices right. we've made and so uh, that's why it's so fantastic to have somebody like you that can uh, bring in some uh more thoughtful processes with the kids and remind them hey there are ways to deal with this i understand that's stressful there here how do we do this in a healthy way to where whenever they get older, they can use those skills that you've learned and not go, you know, I'm so stressed out. The only option I feel like I have is to turn to uh, self-medicating, whether it be alcohol, right. drugs, or, you know, whatever. They have those skills in their back pocket to go, I remember Miss Harris in fourth grade. I was having a rough day, and I went and talked to her, and she just uh, gave me a side hug and said, you know what, I believe in you. Uh, remember those things that we talked about, your breathing and being aware of your, your body and how you can handle that better. And use all those things to 10, 15 years down the road, they're using those mm -hmm. instead of pulling out the pack of cigarettes mm -hmm. or turning to you know a drink uh, that they don't necessarily need. So that, I think, is how yeah. we tie it to uh, yeah. our grants Absolutely. very easily. Absolutely. Um, I think... I think that's all <laughs> for now. Well, it just, I, I really encourage the parents to yeah. just know you're not alone. Like if your yeah. child is having anxiety, reach out. Um, and it's just really important to partner with the school because we love your kids too. Yes. Yeah. So, yep. you know, absolutely. And don't forget that parents, right? All of the, everybody up there is there for your kid and things get difficult mm -hmm. just like in mm -hmm. the real world. And, just be patient yeah. with everybody because we're all in this together. Lots of grace. That's right. That's, right. That's, That's right. right. Well, thank you so much for coming today. We really appreciate all the information that you've shared with us. Um, and what else? Let's, uh, yeah. let's go out into <laughs> the done? world and utilize some of this information. <laughs> pass it along. Okay. Uh, thank you for being patient yep. with my technical mess ups. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you. thank you guys for tuning we'll in. Guys. And we appreciate you. And we'll see you later.